In Ohio, Curtis looks at the huge clouds in the sky while standing under the rain, confused because instead of water it appears to be motor oil. However, it's just a dream and the weather is actually lovely. Afterward Curtis has breakfast with his wife Samantha and his deaf daughter Hannah before going to work. Curtis works for a construction company while Samantha is a housewife that takes care of Hannah, but she also sews things to sell at the local fair on Saturdays. That afternoon, Samantha is hanging out with some friends at home, who brought their kids for a playdate. One of them notices Hannah has grabbed a dangerous piece of wood with nails, so Samantha has to rush outside to stop her since yelling warnings obviously doesn't work. Moments later, it starts to rain heavily so the construction workers have to stop for the day and the employees catch a drink together at the bar. At home, Samantha teaches Anna the sign for storm while watching the rain through the window. After the bar, Curtis drops his co-worker and dear friend Duart at home. They chat for a while and Duart says that Curtis is having a wonderful life. However Curtis admits things aren't always as pretty as they seem. Their conversation is cut short when Duart's wife comes out, solidly demanding him to go inside. Afterward Curtis goes home and checks on Hannah while Samantha shares that the girl still has trouble connecting with other children. The next day, Curtis is cleaning up the trash so Hannah won't grab other dangerous things. At that moment a heavy storm appears in the sky and suddenly a lightning bolt hits the ground, causing Curtis' dog Red to star barking like mad. As Curtis moves to hold Hannah's hand, the dog breaks free from its chain and attacks Curtis, viciously biting his arm. However Curtis wakes up in his room because it was another nightmare. During breakfast, Curtis can't stop thinking about how real the dream felt. He sees Hannah is playing with Red and worries, so he takes her away from the dog. When Samantha asks what's wrong, Curtis snaps and leaves without even touching his breakfast. Later at work, Curtis continues to be distracted and won't stop staring at his arm during a meeting, thinking he can still feel the pain. The boss Jim is angry over the delay caused by the rain and wants them to catch up today. On his way to the site, Curtis asks Duart to help him grab some extra supplies first. Later Curtis takes a break and sees a swarm of blackbirds in the sky flying in weird patterns. He asks Duart if he thinks it's strange, but Duart didn't see anything. Because of the extra hours used to catch up with the delayed work, Curtis is late for the parent-teacher conference at Hannah School. He's also covered in mud because he couldn't shower. They're taught more about essential sign language for their children, which Curtis needs to practice more. Since he doesn't spend as much time with Hannah as Samantha, he doesn't know enough words yet. Sometime later, it's raining again and Curtis rushes to get in the car with his daughter. The rain makes it hard to see and it makes them crash. Curtis' head is bleeding but Hannah is okay. At that moment, men appear outside the car and start breaking the windows, with one guy holding down Curtis while the other kidnaps the girl. Suddenly Curtis wakes up screaming, realizing it was another dream. Afterward he goes downstairs looking rather sick. Samantha notices and worries, but Curtis promises it's just a cold and tells her to leave for the fair with Hannah. While Samantha sells her goods and argues with clients over prices, Curtis takes out the extra supplies he got at work and builds a fence around the doghouse before locking Red in it, apologizing to the poor guy. Now he should work on cleaning the trash, but he's distracted by a door that leads to a storm shelter. Curtis searches for the key in an old jar and manages to open it, then he goes down there to consider a new idea. Later in the evening, Samantha puts the money she made in the fair with their vacation savings. She asks Curtis why Red is kept outside now, but Curtis just offers a vague answer. Samantha tries again yet Curtis ignores her to listen to the news, where they're talking about a gas leak that affected a small family. This feeds Curtis paranoia. The next day, Curtis finds Hannah looking at the storm through the window. When he comes closer, he's startled to see a man standing outside looking at them. Curtis immediately takes Hannah in his arms and runs to hide as the man starts trying to open the door. Suddenly the whole building begins shaking and every object in the living room levitates as Curtis has trouble breathing. Then everything falls and Curtis gasps as he wakes up from another nightmare. To his shock, he's wetted the bed. When Samantha walks in, he covers his accident with the blankets. Curtis asks for the doctor's number and Samantha tries to check on him out of worry, however Curtis snaps at her to keep her from seeing the wet sheets. He immediately apologizes for his outburst, blaming it on feeling unwell, but he still tells her to go to church because he can take care of Hannah. After Samantha is gone, Curtis changes the sheets and washes off the evidence. Later Curtis takes Hannah to the library and distracts her with a book for kids while he searches for information about mental illness. On their way back, they stop at a grocery store to buy lots of canned foods. This causes them to be late for lunch with Hannah's family, who judge him for missing church. In the afternoon, Curtis starts cleaning the storm shelter and stores all the canned food he brought in case of an emergency. Then he stays there reading the library books. Sometime later, Curtis finally gets to see a doctor and explains he's been trouble sleeping for four days. At first the doctor thinks it isn't a big deal, so Curtis also tells him about the nightmares, admitting he wetted the bed and that he kept feeling the pain from the dog bite. The doctor agrees to give him medicine for a few days and tells him to consult a psychiatrist in Columbus. In the meantime, Samantha visits the insurance agency to ask about the operation to restore Hannah's hearing. 
Thankfully her request is approved and all the expenses will be covered because Curtis has job offers a very good policy. At the same time Curtis goes to the pharmacy to get his medicine and is surprised to learn he doesn't have to pay much thanks to his insurance. That night, the family has a wonderful dinner together as they celebrate the good news, but Curtis doesn't tell them about his medicine. While getting ready for bed, Samantha already starts making plans for a vacation since they won't have to worry about money anymore. Curtis secretly takes the medicine in the bathroom. The next morning, Curtis wakes up feeling well rested and Samantha notices he looks healthier too. However at work, Curtis still chats with Duart about the right amount of food for a shelter. Suddenly he starts hearing thunder in the sky, which is still clear. He asks Duart and he doesn't hear anything, so Curtis panic and runs to a bin to throw up. Struggling with a panic attack, Curtis leaves his work and starts having trouble breathing while driving, so he stops the car to take a moment and regain control. When he's finally calm, he notices a place that sells containers and gets one to expand the shelter. Moments later he visits his mother, who behaves awkwardly because she's heavily medicated. It turns out she developed paranoid schizophrenia at about the same age that Curtis is now. He's worried that the same may be happening to him and tries asking a few questions, but she doesn't remember much about those stressful years. Afterward Curtis calls his doctor to explain he can't drive all the way to Columbus for a psychiatrist, so he asks for an alternative. That night he calculates how much it would cost to transform the shelter into a full bunker. The next morning he goes to the bank and takes out a home improvement loan without telling his wife and ignoring his agent's warnings. Later at work, Curtis asks Duart for help because he wants to take some equipment from work to build his bunker. This is against the rules, but Duart agrees to help. A worried Duart also asks him if he's fine, and Curtis assures him he is. After work, Curtis goes to see a local counselor and drops all his theories based on the research he did. The woman explains she's just a counselor so she can't diagnose him or prescribe anything, but they can talk so she can guide him through his crisis. He starts talking about his mother, who one day left the family and his dad had to rise him and his brother. She was later found eating trash out of a dumpster and they had to put her in a state hospital. He also starts opening up about his dreams. In the evening, the family goes to another school meeting. On their way back, Curtis stops the car because he's seeing tons of lightning in the sky. However her family is still sleeping and no other driver reacts, making him worry more about his mental health. On Saturday while Samantha and Hannah are at the fair, Curtis and Duart start working on the shelter. When Samantha arrives and sees everything, she freaks out and an argument ensues. Samantha gets angrier when she hears Curtis took a loan and yells as she demands an explanation for all his weird decisions lately, like locking up Red. However Curtis says there's nothing to explain and leaves the room to check on Hannah while Samantha has a breakdown. That night, Curtis takes more medicine than he should. In the middle of the night, Samantha wakes up when she discovers Curtis having a seizure and bleeding next to her. She immediately calls an ambulance, ignoring Curtis when he says it isn't necessary. Moments later after the paramedics leave, Curtis finally tells Samantha everything. He swears he's going to the counselor often because he doesn't want to leave his family like his mother did. The next day, Curtis and Samantha take Hannah to the hospital for a checkup and her surgery is scheduled in six weeks. At work, Curtis goes to see his boss and asks him to take Duart off his crew because he doesn't want to give orders to his best friend. Jim thinks it's weird but agrees before pointing out Curtis has been missing a lot from work. Curtis explains it's because of Hannah's doctor visits, but Jim gives him a warning. After work, Curtis goes to a store to buy gas masks, which turn out to be very expensive. Meanwhile Duart's wife tells Samantha about the rumors behind Curtis' behavior, but Samantha gets defensive and swears they're doing fine. Sometime later, Curtis is working on the shelter when he's visited by his brother Kyle, who has heard about his strange behavior from Samantha. Kyle worries about Curtis' health but Curtis keeps saying he's fine and tells Kyle to visit their mother. It's clear that the brothers have a very awkward relationship. Before Kyle leaves, Curtis remembers he had been looking for a dog and asks him to take Red. During a stormy afternoon, Curtis enters the kitchen and finds Samantha soaked from the rain. They stare at each other for a moment before she considers grabbing a knife. However this is another dream. At breakfast, Curtis can't shake the freaky nightmare feeling and when Samantha tries touching his hand, he moves it away. At that moment, they notice Jim waiting outside. Curtis rushes to meet him and hears horrible news. Jim found out about the equipment Curtis borrowed illegally, so he fires him with only two more weeks of medical insurance. Duart has also been given two weeks of unpaid administrative leave for helping. When Curtis shares the news with Samantha, she slaps him before rushing out of the room with Hannah. Later, Curtis goes to see his counselor only to discover the woman was transferred and there's a new guy. This man wants him to start over from the beginning, but Curtis can't take going over his mother again and losing the progress so he leaves without a word. He goes back to the shelter and continues working on it. Meanwhile Samantha keeps fixing neighbors clothes for extra money, but it isn't enough and she must take the remaining savings from their vacation can. In the evening Samantha talks to Curtis, who explains his flinching was because of a dream and grabs her hand to prove he's working on it. Samantha announces they're cancelling the beach trip and they'll use his last check to cover two months of bills. She'll postpone Hannah's surgery and they both must concentrate on getting jobs. 
Samantha is willing to work on their issues, but she puts the condition that Curtis must go to an actual psychiatrist. She also wants him to come to a school dinner on the weekend to work on his isolation. On the night of the event, Curtis is confronted by Duarte, who blames him for his job suspension. Curtis tries to ask him to talk later in private, but Duarte keeps going as he complains about Curtis cutting him off when they're supposed to be friends. Duarte even pushes and punches Curtis, who kicks him back. Finally snapping, Curtis yells as he throws a table on the floor. He announces there's a devastating storm coming and nobody is ready for it. Then he has a breakdown and Samantha uses the chance to take him home. Sometime later, Curtis sees Hannah in the middle of the road and runs to pick her up. At that moment a bunch of birds appear in the sky and fly in weird patterns before moving toward Curtis. He protects Hannah as the birds fly past them, then they do another weird pattern before they start falling dead to the ground. Terrified, he runs into the house as a siren begins wailing. At that moment he wakes up and discovers the siren is happening in real life. It's raining quite heavily, so Curtis takes his family and they run to hide in the shelter. After locking the door, Curtis makes them put on oxygen masks just in case. Then they fall asleep and wait for the storm to pass. A few hours later, Curtis wakes up and checks on the door, but he can still feel the storm outside and goes back to sleep. In the morning, Samantha wakes him up, asking him to open the door because the storm is over. Curtis disagrees and says he can still hear it, he also makes Samantha touch the door so she can feel it. However Samantha doesn't hear or feel anything. Panicking, Curtis steps back and refuses to open the door, offering the key to his wife. Samantha refuses to take it because doing it for him would only delay the issue and Curtis needs to confront his fears. Wanting to be good for his family, Curtis gathers his strength and finally opens the door to find a beautiful sunny day. The neighbors are fine and picking up any trash left by the storm. Sometime later, Samantha finally takes Curtis to the psychiatrist. The doctor agrees to give Curtis more medication immediately and decides he needs time away from the shelter. He tells the family to take a few days off to rest and get ready because Curtis will need to be sent to a specialized facility until he recovers. This means he won't see his family for a while. The next day, the family is at the beach. Curtis and Hannah are making a sandcastle when suddenly Hannah signs the word storm as she points at the sea. Samantha comes out and discovers it's raining oil. At that moment the whole family sees a huge dark storm approaching in the distance and Curtis turns to Samantha, who nods at him to confirm she can see it too. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.